Done. <clears throat> a very good afternoon again, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Alain Patran, and I'll be your host today. Uh, we'll present live on Facebook uh, some additional information about our direct deposition 3D printing for manufacturing and dream manufacturing force organized by A Star. This uh, live transmission is made possible through joint efforts from Advanced Manufacturing and Technology Center and Singapore Institute of Manufacturing Technology through their knowledge, through our knowledge transfer office. Uh, I have together with me online uh, two colleagues, Ms. Grace Day and uh, Dr. Davide Verdi. They are going to introduce themselves. Uh, when it comes to the content of today's webinar, we'll have a first part by Ms. Grace Day, who's going to talk to you a bit more about who Advanced Manufacturing and Technology Center is. And then uh, Dr. Verdi is going to give you more details about what exactly this training is about and what's in it. Uh, you'll have the opportunity to ask questions and I'll make sure I manage them all. Uh, the easiest way is to type them in the chat window. Uh, the other way is to raise your hand during the Q&A session, and uh, I will invite you to, to ask the questions live. So without any additional waste time, let's invite Ms. Tay to tell us a bit more about who advanced manufacturing and technologies and how does this fit in the bigger picture of manufacturing is mistake. Thank, thank you, Alin. So hi, everyone. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Grace. Uh, so I'll be giving uh, you a first introduction to uh, firstly our organization, Advanced Remanufacturing and Technology Center, a part of ASTAR. Uh, I'll start with an introduction also uh, on what manufacturing and remanufacturing is before diving into direct deposition and its applications, after which I'll pass on the ball to my colleague, Dr. Davide Verdi, who will share more in detail about the course as Alin has mentioned. So firstly, a little bit about myself. So I'm currently a senior development engineer and team lead at the ARTC under the Advanced Remanufacturing Group. I graduated with a bachelor's degree in aerospace engineering from NTU. Uh, prior to joining ARTC in 2014. So since then, I've been working on additive manufacturing technologies, focusing uh, on laser powder bloom de direct deposition. So we have been doing this for a good seven years. Currently, the team leader in this area, I'm helping to drive developments in the technology, uh, especially towards the next generation of manufacturing and remanufacturing, where some of the big concepts include uh, sustainability and, and digitalization. So we do work a lot on developing uh, such application solutions across uh, various industries, okay? So before we go into direct deposition and 3D printing, uh, just to give an overview about what manufacturing and more importantly, what remanufacturing is, because I believe that remanufacturing is a term that um, uh, people would be more uh, unfamiliar with. So here, is a slide showing the difference, uh, key differences between the two in terms of how a uh, typical cycle uh, for manufacturing and remanufacturing looks like. So for manufacturing, it starts with extracting the raw materials before you actually process the part, put the parts together in what we call the assembly stage, uh, after which you know, the parts are distributed and sold before going into service. So at the end of its life, um, the parts are typically uh, wasted by disposal. So what remanufacturing hopes to do is at stage number six, for parts that are defective or damaged, we actually look into uh, repairing the part. But that, of course, comes firstly with uh, key processes like disassembly to uh, disassemble the component, which will have many more uh, little parts, which we then inspect. Um, and then before we do the repair. And prior to putting it back, there's always going to be a, a assembly stage and then do the final testing and putting it back in service. So the key difference uh, comes in terms of the material uh, usage because at the, in manufacturing, basically you are throwing away the components and buying new ones. 
It's going to be a high volume of materials and parts, as well as the energy and carbon dioxide that comes um, uh, uh, that comes into play. Whereas if you're remanufacturing and reusing parts that uh, are already uh, having a first life cycle, you can imagine the amount of savings that you can achieve. So a quick example here uh, of a life cycle analysis done uh, by, 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 by RIT. So this is a study done on mid-sized gas powered car engines. So on average, it's been found that in terms of energy, remanufacturing actually saved 68 to 93%. For carbon emissions, it's 73 to 87%. And especially if you look at raw materials, it's a good 90%. So there's a lot going uh, into sustainability. A lot of material, a lot of energy can be saved by remanufacturing. In any case, in both, um, whether it be manufacturing or remanufacturing, direct deposition and additive manufacturing have very critical roles to play, okay? So moving on, before I dive into uh, the technology of AM itself, uh, as well as direct deposition, I'll just give an overview about uh, our organization first, especially since the training that we will be providing will be hosted and facilitated here. So to give everyone uh, uh, an idea of what our environment is like and what our, our overall goals are. So the ARTC is an uh, is, uh, institute under ASAR. So currently we are the leading Public-Private Partnership Research Center in Southeast Asia. So our, our mission is really to develop and deploy advanced manufacturing solutions, as well as to upskill the workforce. Uh, one of the reasons why we are offering the course. So ultimately, we are hoping to drive local industry competitive, uh, competitiveness. So we are um, also uh, collaborating a lot with uh, educational institutes. Hence, we are sort of bridging the gap between research and industry where we receive problem statements from the industry, we do projects with the industry, but we are strongly supported by educational institutes as well. So ultimately, in the entire ecosystem, we are serving and empowering not just the MNCs, but also the local SMEs as well as LEs. So in ARTC, there are six big technology groups, as you can see. So the first one being additive manufacturing and industrialization, where you have a lot of the 3D printing technologies and not just uh, polymers that you see in co uh, many commercial platforms, but largely looking into metal printing as well, because that's where the industry is looking for, 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 par for parts. So in the, on the second technology group, we have advanced remanufacturing. And this is where we have not just direct deposition, which looks at um, doing repair and restoration, but we also are coupled with um, some other sub-teams that looks into masking and automation, intelligent machining, as well as looking at the entire remanufacturing process and how we actually do industrialization in that areas. So we, we have robotic applications, advanced robotic applications as a technology group. So this is where we look to robotize many industrial operations that are conventionally manual. So the fourth group, data surface, uh, data-driven surface enhancement, this is where uh, the, the group and the teams look into various ways um, to, to, to support manufacturing and remanufacturing, looking into technology for surface prep and finishing, surface enhancements, uh, as well as coatings. So for the fifth group, intelligent product verification, this is where uh, the metrology aspects as well as the inspection processes come into play. The, the group develops and looks into new ways to um, inspect components, uh, many a times in non-disruptive manners. And lastly, moving towards uh, Industry 4.0, we now also have a smart manufacturing group that looks into virtual, uh, virtual manufacturing as well as um, digital manufacturing. So looking a lot into uh, digitalization, supply chain, and also uh, making use of the latest augmented reality technologies to optimize manufacturing and remanufacturing workflows. So in, in general, as an overview, ARTC is comprised of groups that tries to cover the entire manufacturing and remanufacturing spectrum. So just to touch a little bit, and I mentioned before, we are playing in the middle, trying to bridge uh, research and, 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 and production. So we are in a prime position where we do projects um, that will infuse uh, research and deep knowledge coupled with operating the machines and developing the processes. So here we are actually exposed and we will be able to expose 
people who partake in our course with a uh, very good knowledge from both ends. So a little bit sharing about achievements so far. So as you can see, um, as mentioned, we are the leading public private partnership research center. Uh, we have a, a good number of staffs. Uh, here it says more than 305, although the number is close to 400 right now. So we are also supported by a good number of uh, students, interns, and even uh, trainees. So uh, the ecosystem here, it's, it's, it's very good for learning. So as of this uh, current time, we do have a good number of over 80 industry members uh, with good global presence. So later in the next couple of slides, we will show who some of these companies are. So uh, lastly, uh, over the course of uh, seven, eight years, we, do, we have actually achieved more than 500 and closing 600 or even 700 industrial projects delivered. So we do have a good base of knowledge supported by people. Uh, so as mentioned, um, here is, uh, is, uh, is an overview of some of the members, member companies that is in the ARPC consortium. We do on the consortium model. So uh, you can see big names such as Halliburton, IHI, Rolls-Royce, Shell and Siemens. So we have actually um, done projects for them. So we receive um, direct industry uh, problem statements. And many a times our applications and knowledge are based on what these industry players need. So now going to additive manufacturing, here's a framework that shows how it's, um, it can be categorized because there are many types of additive manufacturing, even if it's one term. So uh, in general, they, they can be uh, known as seven families of additive manufacturing, coupled with a hybrid uh, category where it, 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 it basically couples additive manufacturing with subtractive, and you combine the two processes many a times on the same machine. So um, the directed energy deposition that we will be introducing to you is only one of, uh, is one of the families here. So compared to some of the other families where uh, for example, powder bed technologies is more widely known. Directed energy deposition really looks into a different kind of AM. Uh, in here at, at ARTC, it's what we call the powder blown. So rather than the powder being um, swept uh, layer by layer on the powder bed, powder is being blown out of a nozzle and a laser comes in to fuse the materials uh, to create a layer of deposition. And this can be easily shown and can be seen in the schematic that is shown on the slide. So um, to introduce what direct, uh, directed energy deposition is or direct deposition, um, laser is used as an energy source and you can have powder or wire as a feedstock material. Here powder is underlined because we have been working and we do have mostly powder capabilities. It, the, the technology can be used for generative and regenerative applications. So by regenerative, we mean repair, for example. Uh, and there are many terminologies that are associated with direct uh, deposition. So as you probably heard me saying, directed energy deposition, DED, that's one of it. Other common names are laser metal deposition, laser cladding, direct laser deposition, um, laser engineered net shape. So these are very common terms um, that are interchangeably used many a times. So some of the advantages of um, direct deposition, uh, and here we are comparing really to conventional welding because many a times applications are similar. You're either putting on material, repairing material, or sometimes even joining material. Uh, the reference here, it's looking at welding. So with laser as energy source, you get um, low heat affected zone, a controllable heat distribution, good consistent overall process control, and overall this will allow us to get very controllably possible near net shape uh, geometries. Okay, so now sharing here some of the typical direct deposition applications. So I mentioned generative and regenerative. So the pictures over here can give you a good idea of what these look like. So um, new part, large format fabrication, these are building or rather generative applications where you can build new parts from scratch. And with the build volumes of some of the systems that we have, uh, on, which are on industrial scale, you can achieve uh, very small parts um, that can have uh, very fine features. 
uh, to very big parts uh, and which can be built very, very quickly. Uh, the, the second category will be feature addition. So also on the generative aspect, it's where you can actually selectively and very locally put on a feature onto an existing component. So that in itself um, has economic benefits if you compare to the conventional cast forge and then machine to get out very localized features. So there's a lot of cost savings that you can already imagine by only putting on what you want versus machining out what you do not need. So lastly, repair coating and hard facing. This is where we go into the re, uh, many a times the regenerative uh, uh, category where we are um, firstly um, prior to, to repair, we, we dig out or we remove the defects and we put back the material so that uh, it can be put back into service. So that's repair. So coating hard facing is where you can actually put on material that can enhance the part performance, for example, to achieve wear and corrosion resistance, uh, where the original parent material uh, may not perform to what you desirably need. Okay. So um, without further ado, um, I will pass the ball to my colleague, Dr. Dadabe Badi, to explain and um, elaborate more about the training that we can offer at the ARTC on this technology. Thank you. Thank you very much, Grace. Uh, thank you for the introduction into what your research center is and what this technology is about. Just to make sure I understood correctly, to me it looks like it's, it's a much better way of, uh, of having a welding type of process deployed in uh, in uh, in the field so not only you can uh, you can weld two parts together but you can add material far from the original surface and uh, and build new things not only repair did i understand correct that's correct alan the 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 range of applications is indeed uh, broad and flexible thank you thank you again grace so let's move now into the deeper content of this course. Dr. Verdi is going to, to tell us a bit more about what's, uh, what's planned for, for this training. Dr. Verdi. Hello, hi everybody. Thank you, Ali, for the introduction. Thank you, Grace, for the, uh, your part as well. Uh, I'm gonna talk to you about uh, the training uh, that we are offering, that we offer to you. Uh, on direct deposition for manufacturing and remanufacturing. Uh, before this, uh, just a quick introduction uh, of myself. Uh, I am actually a, a scientist and a technical lead in uh, uh, direct laser deposition in RTC. I joined RTC in 2017 and I am working on uh, laser deposition since I started my uh, my PhD back in 2011, so almost uh, I was uh, traveling and working in, uh, in different countries, in Europe, Spain, France, and then I moved here to Singapore. So the training we are going to offer uh, is fully developed by ARTC, as also uh, Grace mentioned uh, before in, uh, in her presentation. And uh, it's based on a previous offer that we, uh, we gave to uh, one of our industry member in, uh, in RTC uh, to build a, a local capability on uh, uh, laser deposition. The target audience uh, and objective is, uh, is the training is started for uh, organization and individuals that are looking for a first uh, understanding of this uh, technology, but also to uh, deep more on uh, uh, and develop their uh, own capabilities with the goal for sure on, uh, for manufacturing and remanufacturing uh, application. For sure, uh, then the typical candidates uh, for this kind of uh, training are, for example, process technicians or engineer, uh, production supervisors or manager, and quality control manager and, uh, and engineer. For this, for example, I uh, call your attention to the picture on the uh, bottom right corner. It's a picture of us of, uh, I think a couple of years ago now, uh, in front of one of our uh, machine in RTC with uh, some of uh, the, the guys that participated at the training. And uh, among them, there are uh, from a technician to a manager to a 
uh, quality control engineer, and all of them uh, enjoy in a different way the, the training that we provide them. The format uh, is uh, essentially divided in two parts, uh, a theory uh, part in which for sure we need to give you some basic concepts uh, on uh, what is uh, the laser deposition, uh, the, the, the materials, etc and a better understanding of all these, uh, all these uh, concepts. And then for sure a practical uh, part in which you can uh, ever first touch an end on uh, uh, on the process uh, with uh, one of our uh, machines available in, uh, in RPC. So the objectives, the key learning outcomes that uh, the participant to this training will uh, will bring home uh, are uh, basically these, uh, listed in these slides. So uh, you will understand the fundamentals of laser blown powder, uh, direct deposition. Uh, so from uh, the process technology itself, including some uh, uh, health and safety aspects, so the licenses and approvals that you need to operate this kind of process in your, in your company here uh, in, uh, in Singapore. Then, uh, for sure, you will understand the key uh, inputs of uh, this process and uh, the outputs, and especially try to connect them to understand their relationship. Uh, relationship. So I modify this input, I get this output, uh, Y, etc. So you will also be able to create like a plan uh, of a systematic strategy for the for process parameter development. So. Uh, as I mentioned before, I modify this parameter, I obtain this output. So instead of just a try and error, maybe you can uh, uh, you can find a way to properly do a, a research of these parameters to achieve the output that you are looking for. You will be able then to identify typical system architecture of uh, the direct deposition technology, so the different components of the machines, uh, kind of understand if there is a uh, um, something that is not working properly, how to act, for example. Uh, so some general understanding of the maintenance also of, the, of this uh, complex uh, equipment. Uh, you will establish also a typical uh, LBP process flow. So uh, essentially basic is from uh, before, what to do before uh, the direct deposition, the process, uh, process itself, so how to monitor it, and then uh, how to check so that your process is correct, what you achieve is what you want, and also some uh, understanding of some example of post-processing. So additional technologies that you can, uh, or processes that you can uh, do on the parts that you repair through direct deposition or you manufacture through direct deposition. You will also understand and learn a bit on uh, uh, process codes and programming. So. Uh, for CAD CAM or uh, uh, create basically the, the tool path that will uh, uh, serve uh, to, to generate the components. And uh, as I mentioned also before, uh, perform basic on-site uh, post-build uh, evaluation. So some ends on uh, these parts. The training will be divided mainly in uh, four, uh, four parts, four chapters, let's say. Uh, the first one uh, is the introduction to a direct deposition, uh, where we uh, again introduce the, the technology and the safety aspects. Second one is the uh, focus on uh, understanding of laser, laser uh, powder blown processing technology. So understanding all the different uh, concepts uh, and architecture of the machines. The third one on the programming, so fundamentals of programming and how to achieve a a proper toolpath. And the last one will be on uh, uh, basically the flow of the entire process from pre-process, in-process monitoring, and post-process uh, activities. I will go through now uh, quickly on uh, each of these four points, just to uh, give you a, a bit more again of, uh, of understanding. So for the first one, for the introduction, uh, here I, I report an image of uh, the process on board. So you can see the, uh, the powder being heated uh, by the laser and being deposited on a surface. Or for to 
if this process basically you need a lot of inputs okay for sure you need a laser and i put the laser i put also this uh this logo that is the the laser uh, safety uh, uh logo basically to also uh, remember that there are some safety uh, aspects correlated to the use of these uh, these technologies for sure you need a uh, a material, a feedstock material, as Grace mentioned before, we are focusing more on uh, powder blown. So uh, I put a couple of images also to need to be able to characterize this material and identify when a material, a powder is uh, a good quality or maybe lesser good quality. For sure, you need gas. Uh, gas is used for carrying this powder and to shield uh, the deposition itself. Remember that is. Uh, this technology comes from welding te technology, so the material will be melt and will solidify very fast. And you need a shielding to protect it, to avoid oxidation and other defects. For sure, you need uh, a controller. So a part of the machine is uh, be able to teach the machine, tell the machine what you need, uh, what the machine have to do to achieve your your final goal. I put here an image of a nozzle. A nozzle is a part of the, of the machine that uh, literally uh, helps to deliver the powder uh, in the melt pool generated by the laser. So also this is uh, very important. We'll uh, discuss more uh, on this and help you to understand the differences between different nozzles, different applications, etc. Here is to understand that you need to a recipe. So when you do the process, you need to input a lot, a lot of uh, parameters uh, that you uh, slowly understand. We, our goal will also to help you to understand the effects of each of them on the quality of your part. And on the bottom side of the slide, I report uh, two very important uh, points that one, the safety aspects, all the uh, dangers related to the process itself, dangers that are mitigated and uh, basically reduced to zero when you follow uh, proper uh, proper rules, proper uh, behavior, basically. Uh, and uh, for sure, the, an example of the laser license that you uh, must have if you want to operate a machine in your uh, in your facility. So all these uh, will be introduced in the first part of uh, the training. The second one, uh, we focus on the, uh, the, the architecture, let's say, of the, the, the position. And here uh, we report for the four machines that we have in, uh, in RTC. Uh, we have a, a machine from Trumpf, uh, one from Beam, and two from DMG Mori. Uh, every one of them with different uh, different characteristics that make them uh, different one from each other. For example, the, the Trumpf machine is uh, probably the bigger one that we have. Uh, is a machine, a laser machine used not only for uh, laser deposition, but also for cutting and welding. Uh, the CNC machine is a seven axis, so it's very flexible. And uh, uh, we have a variable spot size. So we will teach you what does it mean, uh, but it means in, uh, in big, yeah. quickly that you can do very uh, near net shapes applications to uh, the position of very uh, big parts or uh, coatings in a uh, short time, let's say. We have the beam machine uh, that is uh, the characteristic to be uh, equipped with a control atmosphere, means that the machine can be sealed and filled with an inert gas, uh, usually argon, and it is possible to uh, to run the, pro the, the process in this inert, inert atmosphere to avoid, for example, the uh, oxidation of the part. So this part, this is mainly done, uh, for example, for uh, materials like titanium alloys. The two on the bottoms are from the are hybrid machines, so additive and subtractives, uh, are machines that have both the uh, laser deposition, but also the machining, are also machining centers. Uh, in this case, the one on the left is for uh, milling, the one on the right for uh, turning. We will, uh, in this part of the, uh, of the training, we'll go in details and uh, explain the different components of the machines. You have some uh, and so on, some uh, more understanding of the parts of uh, what is a 
direct deposition machine basically. In the third part, we will go in the programming uh, for direct deposition. Uh, in particular, we'll uh, uh, we focus on uh, CAD CAM, in which basically we, you can uh, literally drawing uh, draw your parts and um, simulate the tool path. So the the, the 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 path that the laser will follow to deposit to create your parts. Uh, for sure, to understand properly uh, this part, we will need to give you some. Uh, understanding of uh, the code that uh, these CAD CAM software uh, generates, so what each line means. And we'll also uh, provide an understanding of other ways to create this tool path, for example, through uh, manual teaching or, for example, directly uh, direct uh, writing of, uh, of the code. Depends, uh, depends a lot, for example, on uh, the application and the kind of geometries uh, that uh, you're going to do. Finally, the, the last one uh, will be to uh, make you understand more on the entire flow of the um, of direct deposition from a pre-process, in which, for example, we will check the quality of the powder, of the laser, doing measurements, like uh, how much powder we need, uh, doing setups on, on the machine, in process in which uh, we will employ, for example, uh, external sensors or internal to the machines to assure that the quality of the process is maintained throughout the entire uh, the duration of the of the process itself. And finally, some uh, understanding of post-processing from, uh, for example, 3D scanning of the parts to assure that uh, the entire, uh, the material that you add, for example, for repairing application is enough. Uh, microstructure to assure that uh, there are no defects, for example, mechanical properties from hardness to uh, tensile, uh, etc., to understand the uh, behavior of the component that uh, was uh, manufactured. Uh, it treatment, so we'll give you some idea of typically treatments that are done on uh, uh, parts made by direct deposition. And for example, some uh, understanding also on uh, machining or other uh, post deposition uh, uh, treatments. This is a key four parts of the uh, of the training. I will conclude with uh, this slide that basically show you a bit on uh, the capabilities that we have in uh, in RTC uh, and uh, that will uh, support the, the the training. So from uh, material characterization equipment for uh, sample preparation or uh, microscopy analysis. For sure, the the machine that I show you before for uh, that deposition. Toolpath generation, we have uh, three software, at least, uh, for, for this job. And for sure, other uh, auxiliary equipment that uh, serve uh, to produce samples or prepare the powder, uh, etc. With this, I conclude my, uh, my presentation. I pass back uh, to Alin. And thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Verdi, for, for, for this thorough uh, description of the content of the course. Uh, before we go into the next session, which is going to be Q&A, I just want to make sure I understood clearly from, from my position as a host. Your intention and, and final outcome of the course is to equip the learners with almost everything they are going to need in order to make sure they can consider this technology for deployment in, in their own company, what is needed in order to embark uh, into the use of this technology, what kind of outcomes one should expect and so on. Did, uh, did, did I understand correctly your presentation? Perfect, <laughs> correct. Everything you said is correct. So this is the key outcome that we are aiming to, to achieve. And this is what we want to to give to the to the people that will uh, sign for uh, for this training. Okay, Thanks. thank you very much again. Thanks. So uh, with this two two parts of our webinar completed, with the introduction in the technology as well as a thorough discussion of what's intended to be in the course, we are moving now towards the the, the final part. Hopefully, the most interesting one for you. Uh, to, to answer whatever questions uh, you may have. While considering questions, uh, you can also have another look at your screen. There is 
uh, a wide range of additional materials which can be downloaded if you scan those QR codes. But now let's let's move to the to the Q and A section. And I already see a question posted in the chat. What DD machines uh, is the RTC using for remanufacturing? Grace, I think you 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 would be able to to answer that. Sure. So, uh, David, could you help me go up to the slides on the four machines? So, thank you, David. So, as you can see here, these are the four uh, main machines that we have in ARTC, and they are all powder blown. Although, as David has already very, uh, you know, specifically indicated the differences of the four machines, we do have a typical open uh, atmosphere system in the trunk, uh, although it's the most flexible in terms of the spot size. And then we have a designated and specialized uh, closed atmosphere system that is really primed to work on uh, reactive materials, and that's the beam uh, modulo 400. And then we have two hybrid machines which combines additive and uh, subtractive uh, uh, processing all on the same machine, just that the laser 65, uh, laser tech 65, uh, in terms of the machining is more of a milling operation compared to the LT, the laser tech 1400, which is a much bigger machine, but, but which is meant to uh, process and turn by turning operation, uh, larger parts, uh, usually uh, cylindrical. So these are the four DD machines that we have in ARTC. And in the training, we will introduce you to all of them. However, for the specific uh, training modules, we will use one of them as a demonstrator. Okay, thank you, Grace. I guess this uh, answers uh, that question thoroughly. But for my curiosity, why did you feel the need to invest in four different machines from three different manufacturers? Okay, so thanks, Alan, for the question. Uh, I think we can, now try to recall that we do work with a very wide range of uh, industry uh, customers and companies. So the reason for uh, looking at all four uh, very unique types of machine is really to so it's really so that we can uh, meet the very different needs of the of the industry. Uh, we have people from aerospace. We where we where we sometimes look at very fine and intricate kind of a repair. And that's where if you have a machine such as the trunk with a, a spot sizes that can go down to 0 0.18 or even the beam, you know, which, which has spot sizes can, can go down to 0 0.8. These are machines that would be primed for such operations. Whereas if you go to the oil and gas industry or marine, for example, where you have much larger components, you could be looking at the larger systems such as the LT4300. And then as mentioned just now, if you work with reactive materials, let's say titanium, then for sure, the, the first choice to look at would be the beam machine. So um, the different range of machines uh, and also from different brands is uh, firstly to look at the capabilities of the equipment guided by the needs of uh, our industry partners. Okay, thank you very much, Grace. I, I guess that, that answers uh, this even more thoroughly. Uh, while uh, we'll be looking to take additional questions, uh, our colleagues from KTO are going to share with you a link to uh, an online form, an online survey in which uh, you'll be asked uh, whether this, uh, this webinar is of interest for you. You'll see the actual content there. So please, while you think uh, what, what uh, additional questions you may have to ask, I already see one popping up. Please also consider giving some quick answers to the um, to the online form, which our colleagues are going to share with you uh, very soon. And while we while they do that, the question which appeared there just now: any prototype product development whom to be I can approach for medical products? Grace or Davide, who, who wants to take this question? Oh, so I see also a follow-up to send uh, um, Mr. Arumugam the context for the below email. Well, I'll say it depends on the specifications and even the geometry of the component. So medical products, uh, you know, uh, not to say that we cannot do on the machines, we can, but firstly, it depends as mentioned on the, the part to, 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 
to be uh, to be built. Uh, let's say if it's titanium, we do have machines that can uh, process titanium. However, in many cases, we can look to our our um, sort of colleagues in the additive manufacturing um, department. They have the powder bed systems, which could be better um, used for uh, medical uh, prototyping, medical product prototyping. So we do work hand in hand uh, very closely with them. Uh, and sometimes the component may even be uh, developed or prototyped by the two technologies. So uh, we are in research and we are more than willing to explore different ways of doing things. Yeah, so I hope that answers your question and we will look into your request as well. Thank you very much, Grace. Uh, indeed, it is capabilities from the RTC, not just from this group, which is dealing with powder blown. It could be capabilities from, uh, from the other groups in the RTC. We could also look at additional capabilities across the whole ASTAR, starting with our colleagues from Simtech. So uh, I'm pretty sure there's going to be a solution to, to any problem which is uh, being thrown to us. Am I right to say that, Grace? Yes, that's right. Thank you again. Uh, our colleagues from Kiki already shared the link. In the, if you open the chat box, you're going to see there uh, a hyperlink to, to the uh, online form. So please go online quickly. I, I think it's, it's a pretty simple form with just some yes, no, uh, no questions. So go there, give us your feedback because we want to make this useful for, for, for you as well as it is for us. To, to, to understand what is needed out there and how we can we can make things uh, better. And why do we do that? We we still have plenty of time to take additional questions. So feel free to to, to ask. Feel free to put uh, anything you would be interested in in the chat box, and we'll try to the best of our capability answer them live now. If if it's something beyond what we can uh, what we can discuss during the time we have in hand, we will come back to you with, uh, with additional uh, explanations and information offline via, via email. So uh, anyway, thank you, Mr. Arumugan for, for, for this uh, link, which are going to establish with uh, with your colleagues from uh, from Italy, we were more than happy to, to to establish collaborations across the world. Let's see exactly what the problem is and, and how we can fit our solutions into the actual problem in a better way. Thank you very much again. gentlemen again ladies and gentlemen it's 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 a good opportunity for you to ask live our specialists in the process and the ones who are actually going to conduct the actual training in order to to, to see exactly what's in for you and uh, how how we can make better use of, of this training for your company, for your career progression, or for any other purposes you, you may have in mind. If you prefer to ask, just raise your, your, your hand using the tools which, uh, which Zoom puts at your disposal. There is a raise hand button at the bottom of your screen, just press it and, uh, and uh, we'll unmute you to, to ask your question live. I will wait for a few more seconds. If there's no other further questions, we will end this webinar for today.
Sure. Well, I guess there is nothing much left for today. Again, additional materials are available. Just scan those QR codes, go online, and you're going to, to find additional information about the course, about how to register for these courses, as well as the web page of the Knowledge Transfer Office, where you may find additional courses of interest for you. Uh, you have already the, the, the means to contact uh, the Knowledge Transfer Office. The speakers for the day, feel free to do so if you have additional questions later. And with one more attempt, if, if there is any additional question at this moment, doesn't look like. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much again for your time. I, I hope we could give you a proper picture of what we are trying to do through this training, through this course. Feel free to contact the speakers later if, if you need to do so. And with this, uh, this, uh, this webinar should be considered closed. From my side, thank you again for your time. I wish you a great weekend and goodbye.